Hello and welcome to Mostly Vintage Cameras. This is a roll of Agfapan 25 film with 36 exposures on uh, which goes in a number of cameras but this particular one happened to be shot with my little uh, Minox Model B uh, which is a great little camera. The film itself is uh, very old and when I shot it the other day it was very murky so I don't have um, high hopes for uh, any success in developing this film but nonetheless that's what I plan to do today so the great thing about Minox, people know the cameras very well but it is a completely integrated system and so when you buy into the Minox system you also get things like the excellent Minox developing tank so everything from loading new film these are reloadable cassettes, uh, so you get uh, any choice of film, you cut it down to size and reload the cassette, you expose it in your camera, you develop it in your Minox developing tank, uh, and there's also a range of Minox parts and accessories to uh, view your images afterwards. So it really is a, a completely integrated ecosystem in its own right. But let's take a close look at this developing tank, because it is quite interesting. Firstly, let's compare it to yeah, a standard, uh, this is an AP developing tank. It will hold two rolls of 35mm film or one roll of um, 120 film. But as you can see, they're chalk and cheese in terms of size. So if you were, for some reason, travelling and you uh, wanted to make sure your images had come out before you moved on to your next, target, uh, next city, then um, you can carry this or you can carry this. And of course the other thing is this uses nearly 400 millilitres of chemistry to process a film. This uses 53. So I've got a smaller camera, smaller film, smaller developing tank, less chemistry to carry. Uh, it really is an excellent camera for travelling long term with. But let's get rid of Mr. 35mm for a moment and take this tank apart. The other thing with this tank is it is truly a daylight tank. You can load the film using this rather unique spiral system in daylight, and that's what we're going to do right now. So you'll find on the tank, there's a little uh, slot here on the top plate, which accepts the film roll, and there's these little metal clip and screw head to retain the film leader. So let's go ahead. You can see on the film itself the tail of the film is cut with this keyhole which obviously sits on this pin or screw head to uh, make it possible to work. Now let's see if I can get this the right way around. You take the film tail you clip it into the little metal spring clip, you hook the hole on the screw, and that secures it in place. You can see how the film is now engaged here and won't come away. The film can sit itself, neatly sits in the base of the tank like this, and the whole assembly goes in just like that. You now unwind the film or take the film out of the cassette by screwing down the helix or the, the spiral in an anti-clockwise manner and everybody I've spoken to has stressed the need to do this anti-clockwise and it's even printed in bold print in the uh, instructions for the developing tank. I reached a point of resistance there, so uh, I'm guessing this is a, a shorter length of film. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop some developer in. So 53 millilitres of developer, it's really a tiny amount. I'm using ID11 here. and. And for pan 25 in ID11 should take uh, five minutes. I'm going to do this for five and a half minutes 
so that uh, it might compensate a little bit for the age of the film. Uh, we'll skip forward uh, to the next step rather than have you watch me twiddle this thermometer. The idea of turning and, and lifting and dropping the thermometer is to agitate the chemistry. So this makes sure fresh chemistry is next to the film all the time. If you're used to 35mm developing, you're probably used to uh, turning the tank upside down for 10 seconds in every minute. But according to the instruction book for the developing tank, you want to be doing this pumping action, as they call it, for the, the full time. But let's fast forward now to the next stage. Okay, so we're coming up on 5 minutes 20. So I'm going to take the thermometer out and pour out my developer. Ooh, that went badly wrong. So I pour out my developer all over my bench and pour in my stop bath. Now people in the know tell me I'm better off using a mono bath developer and fix it all together um, but I don't have that to hand so I'm using ID11 and conventional stop bath and I've just got a little bit too much in there haven't I it's just spilling out a little bit there we go that's a, a little bit better hmm this just takes uh, 30 seconds to a minute or so it just arrests the development it's not really a, an absolutely necessary step the stop bath so I'm gonna call it there that's about 40 45 seconds see if I can make a better fist of emptying the stop bath than I did with the developer there you go and then the last step of course is to add the fixative Now I tested this with a strip of uh, an exposed film earlier, it's, it's all fresh chemistry. So this actually fixed the film in um, just around about uh, 20 seconds or so. Again we're a little bit dribblesome aren't we? Let's level that off. I've, I was very cautious to uh, not have too much. I don't have too little chemistry and what I've done is I've made slightly too much but that's okay. I'm going to run this for about a minute to be on the safe side. So that should be plenty. What a mess I've made, I don't know. So lastly, rinse it all out with uh, clean fresh water at the same temperature as the chemistry. Gonna do one bath like that. I'm just gonna dump out straight away. And then do a couple more rinses. You can see, and I've not used this developing tank before, so it's a learning experience for me as much as anything. You can see when the chemistry gets to the the top of the well here, that's when you want to uh, stop pouring. I'm just going to jiggle that around a little bit, agitate it. I'm going to do one more like this. Maybe two actually. That's too much, too much, too much, too much. It's all going on the floor and everywhere. I don't know. Uh, 
And finally, I'm just going to take this next door to the kitchen and run it under a, a tap for a little while. But that, that's basically the process over. And in a moment, we'll see. Okay, back from rinsing that out. Now for the moment of truth. Will I have some images or a blank fill or something else? Let's find out. And this really is the, the magic of analog photography. That hasn't, oh dear, gone well. I can see straight away it's come unclipped, I think. No, no, it's still attached. Not sure why it's all curly whirly like that. But yeah, there are definitely images there. Teeny tiny little Minox images. Okay, well, I'm going to call that a success and go and hang this film up to dry. When you hang the film up to dry, by the way, you might be used to, if you're used to a 35mm developing, putting a, a weight on the end of your film. But of course, with Minox, the film cassette itself becomes the weight. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's useful to somebody. This was my first time using this developing tank, so probably not the most expert demonstration. But hopefully you've learned along with me. Have a good day.